Divorce Lawyers, What is the Most Insane Way a Spouse Has Tried to Screw the Other? Not my case, but during my first year of law school lawyers from different practices came to give us a peek behind the curtain of different areas. The divorce lawyer told the story of rather well-to-do couple that spent months and months and many tens of thousands of dollars fighting over absolutely everything all the way down to a single ceramic ashtray. He couldn't remember the significance, but somehow it had come through the husband's family. Even after everything else had been decided, they spent many more months and nearly $100,000 fighting over just this ashtray. Then, after a court hearing the wife finally won the ashtray. She promptly strode out to the white courthouse steps, and smashed the ceramic ashtray. Left the pieces all over for the husband to see on his way out. Decided that day I would not be a divorce lawyer. Once had a boss who had to leave his house for six hours while his ex-wife grabbed all the belongings she was legally entitled to. When he returned home every knob and handle was gone. Door knobs, cabinet handles, drawer handles, anything that was screwed onto something and used to open it, she had taken. Every day for the next week he would occasionally yell out she took the ducking knobs. I didn't handle the divorce, I handled parts of the aftermath. In the divorce, she went a wall was living in a truck somewhere, and just couldn't handle it mentally. He gave her five of his nine companies. They were the ones that owed seven figures in payroll taxes. He had made her the bookkeeper on paper. She spent decades trying to shake the IRS for the results. I'm a lawyer but have had a very limited amount of experience in divorce cases. The first case I ever worked the husband shaved slash waxed every single hair off his body in an attempt to avoid a court-mandated drug test. A soon-to-be ex-husband left his wife's prized koi to die on the doorstep of their house. Apparently the value of these fish, six in total, was over $100,000. She was, according to her lawyer, so distraught that she couldn't be in court. Only in LA. Not my divorce. But my divorce lawyer told me about a case she was involved in where both clients were so petty that they had to all meet to argue over literally every single scrap of everything. The final object that neither would settle on was a ceramic rabbit statue, a really generic one from Home Depot or whatever. Zero sentimental value but since it was the final item, neither side wanted to lose the last thing and they dragged it out over three separate meetings for this one thing. I don't remember which ended up getting it, but once they settled it and signed everything. The winning party stuck it on their lawyer's desk as a gift and walked out. Friend was going through divorce from insane husband. He had been texting her pics of the gun he bought and threatening her. Police were called. Nothing they could do because it was only a picture. He was staying with a secret girlfriend at this point. She allowed him to go get his stuff from the house. She was scared to go back in the house alone. I went with her. First red flag was he had changed the locks. So we waited for locksmith to open the house and change the locks again. Well, when the door opens, we noticed all of the furniture was gone. So we carefully went upstairs in search of her cats. The entire second floor was empty. No cats. No furniture. Even her clothes were gone. Come to find out he hired a moving company to pack and take everything, even the food in the fridge. Finally found the cats. He had taken them to another vet in town and put them up for boarding under his sister's name thinking she would not be able to find them. He was finally forced to disclose what happened to her possessions. He had them taken to a storage unit far away from the home. Divorce lawyer here. Spouse had been out of the house for weeks. She waited until he was on a business trip, came into the house, turned on all of the faucets, plugged the drains, turned off the furnace, and left. It was minus 10 degrees. He came back five days later. The house was ruined. The water froze and cracked the foundation. I'm not a divorce lawyer but my parents got divorced about a year ago. My mom didn't want my dad to show up in court because he would contest and then they'd have to split the assets. She phoned me and told me to put laxatives in his food so he wouldn't be able to make it there. I was an assistant for a family law practice not a lawyer. So it was already a disaster of a divorce because the ex-husband was a douche. But it got so much worse when the wife started dating someone new with a severe cat allergy like a year after they split up. Her psycho ex bought a cat on his time with the kids, except he's not allowed pets at his apartment. He sends the kids back to their mom's house with the cat and all its stuff. 
Mom is pissed because she didn't want a cat at all plus her boyfriend is crazy allergic. She calls us asking what to do because her kids are bawling saying that she can't get rid of their new sibling and she has the cat in the garage. X told kids if mommy loves you, she'll let you keep the cat since daddy is not allowed cats at his house. Paralegal for divorce lawyer. This one is morbid. We represented a guy who believed vehemently that his wife was assaulting the children. The authorities were involved, child services was involved. It was never clear what the truth was or if anything at all was going on, but our client was sure. He shot his wife dead at a custody exchange in front of the children. He then sat down and waited for the authorities. We visited him in jail with his criminal defense attorney. As we were leaving, he told me, well, I guess the divorce is over now. And he laughed. This was the first time I had ever been speechless. Husband and wife divorce after husband finds out wife is sexting other guys. He goes into a deep depression. They didn't have much. Lots of dead and two dogs. One was a dog he had had since before the marriage. He got her. The other dog was only about three years old and was bought to keep the older, seven-year-old, dog company while they worked. Wife demanded that since he got his dog that she got the other. He is depressed and just wants to move on so he agrees. She gets the dog and has it put down the next day. She didn't want the dog. She just wanted to hurt him. This one hits close to home because it happened between my parents. We had a family friend who was a lawyer and my parents agreed that he would be the lawyer for both of them as a mediator. So, as the assets were being divided my dad got absolutely slammed. She was going to get the house, cars, half his retirement, and an insane amount of alimony. To the tune of like $2,500 a month for the rest of her life. My dad has a good job as a municipal employee, but that was probably 70%-ish of his paycheck. Turns out that my mom and the family friend actually conspired to rip my dad off and make it seem like that's what a divorce settlement looks like. And she was going kick back more money under the table after the dust had settled. Dad just didn't know how these things worked. So, after some convincing he finally went out and got his own lawyer. He got a very fair divorce settlement after that. Mom still to this day can understand why we don't talk to her much. I represented a guy who was on his second marriage. His first wife passed away from cancer, he and his kids were obviously devastated. My client was a pretty sensitive guy with a big heart. His second wife could be very charming which was why he fell for her but it was all a facade. Anyway, to make a long story about a lengthy divorce short, my client met a very kind and affectionate woman during his case. They really hit it off and were basically engaged, even though his divorce was far from over. The fiancé started having health problems and was diagnosed with a form of terminal cancer. Somehow the second wife found out about this and tried to use the cancer diagnosis against my client in court. She developed this crazy theory that my client had killed his first wife by giving her cancer and that he was doing the same thing to his fiancé. The second wife's attorney who was quite good refused to be a party to it. The attorney never addressed the argument in court and didn't even ask the second wife any questions about it during testimony. Rather, the attorney informed the judge that the second wife wished to address the court directly about an issue. The judge allowed her to do so, in a highly irregular move. The second wife told her crazy conspiracy theory to the judge, adding that she was certain my client had tried to give her cancer at some point as well. I wish I had an artist's rendering of the scene, capturing the second wife's crazy eyes. Her attorney's look of shame slash embarrassment, the judge's look of confusion slash ennui, and my look of awe-inspired disgust.